Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Wherever you are, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. My name is Stephen Msembi, born again. It's an honor to be here. Revival Studios, Kayole. This is H City represented. Uh, it's always a joy for me to be in the presence of God. Even right now, we're in the presence of God. Sometimes I think um, we always want to make it an event. We always want it, uh, want it to be something that has been preconceived, something that has been planned for. But it is good when you just walk with the consciousness that he is Emmanuel. God with you every single time, every hour, no matter where you are. He is the all-seeing God, ever-present. And it doesn't matter where you are right now, whether you're driving, whether you are at work, whether you're at home. Maybe you're just chilling with a group of friends somewhere. God is right there with you. And right now, he's coming to me and he's coming to you to give us a message I do believe that God is going to speak to your heart right now. We are in very hard times in the moment. Um, everybody somewhere, everybody anywhere, they're all talking about COVID-19 and all the issues that have come along with that. We're talking about the things that have just stopped. We're talking about the things that have just um, been delayed. We're talking about things that have been ruined. And um, apart from businesses and schools we have marriages that are in trouble we have relationships that are going under we have faith even religion in itself that has been cut short for some people and people are trying to look for uh, for a light and they can't seem to find it but I tell you the truth God is here for you right now you will see the light piercing through your heart right now I want you to walk with me because there's a message that God has placed in my heart that I believe is solely meant for you. Yes, you. So tune in, be keen, and walk with me. I want us to turn to the book of Genesis. We're going to talk about a young man by the name of Jacob. I call him a young man because the story is featuring right when he's starting to discover himself. Let me give you a bit of a background of Jacob before we sink into the message. See, he was the lazy one. He was the one who was always easy going. He always sat in the tents in the cool of the day while his brother Esau, the mighty warrior, the hunter, went out and got game, brought it back to the family. He had all the accolades. They praised him as the great warrior. Even when you're thinking about successors, it is often that when you think about it, it has to be somebody with charisma, somebody with skill, somebody with ability. And this was not Jacob. It was always Esau. And uh, in the story right now, as we're going to see, Jacob has just tricked the father into giving him the blessing that was supposed to be Esau. You see, the thing about Jacob's name is that he was the deceiver. Everything in his life, he got through deception, including the blessing that he had now received from his father, pretending to be his brother Esau. So we're going to pick up the story from the book of Genesis chapter 28. He has just conned his father. He has conned him into blessing him. Esau is pissed off and he wants to kill his brother. So Jacob is on the run and he is the victim of a decision that he made. The consequences of the decisions that he made are now chasing him. He's running away from home. He's going into a desert and he finds himself alone. And we'll pick up the story from the book of Genesis chapter 28 from verse 10. This is what the Bible says. And Jacob went out from Bathsheba and went toward Aaron. And he alighted, he alighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took one of the stones of the place and he put it under his head and he lay down in that place to sleep. Let me hold there just a minute. Let's put it into context. He's running away from his brother. So fear is a motivation for him right now. He's finding himself in the desert of the Negev. That is where Bathsheba was found. And this place, the Bible says, the sun set while he was in this place. So this was not his destination. It just happened that the sun went down on him while he was there. The sun, the light went away. He found himself in a dark place along his way, along his destination. And let me just contextualize that and bring it to our situation right now. 
when COVID hits, and not only COVID, let me not make it about COVID. Some of us, we are in a place in our life right now whereby you are on a destination. You are on your way to making it big. Maybe you had a plan for yourself, whether it was marriage, whether it was business, whether it was school, whether it was reconciling with family, whether it was you are on the edge of faith. You had just discovered that Jesus Christ is Lord and you're growing in the faith. And maybe you are on the path on that destination. And just like Jacob, you've just found out that the sun has set in a place where you did not plan for. The light has escaped you right now. And in this case, let's consider the light to be an idea. Let, it, let us consider the light to be control. Let us consider the light to be understanding. Maybe you're in a place in your life right now where things are so uncertain. You don't know what to do. You don't have options anymore. You always had things figured out. But right now, you can't see even two steps ahead of you. I know how that feels. I've been there before. And maybe to some extent, I'm there too. And the Bible is saying the sun set on him while he was in that place, an unfamiliar place. And then the Bible continues to say at that particular moment, what he did, he took a stone and he placed it upon his head. I want you to see this picture. The place where he has rested his head is a hard place. It's a rock. And I know you're familiar with this term. Maybe you've heard it before. He was between a rock and a hard place. He lay his head on a hard place. And maybe that is where you are right now. Maybe you're in a hard place in your life right now. And things are not making sense for you. And uh, the Bible is saying as he rested his place right there. He's afraid. He's running from his brother. He's not gotten to where he was heading to. He has to park himself in an unfamiliar place and he has to rest there. And at that particular moment, my mind just went on to think about the young man that is Samson. At some point in his life, he has just finished fighting the Philistines with the with with jawbone of a donkey. And at that moment, the Bible said, after he had gotten this great victory, you would think he's at the apex of his life at that moment. Maybe he should be feeling good. He should be feeling happy. He has just conquered a great battle. But the Bible said, at that particular moment, he got thirsty. And when he turns to the Lord, the prayer that he makes, it makes you understand where his mind was at that particular moment. Because the Bible says, he says, God, I'm thirsty right now. You've just helped me conquer this victory. Are you going to let me die of thirst? For a man, a strong man, he's for lions. He's for a thousand men. For a man as strong as that to come to a place where he's saying, I'm about to die of thirst gives you a picture and an idea of the kind of thirst he was feeling at that moment. And you consider also, when you're thinking about Bathsheba, Bathsheba, that particular place, an interesting fact about that place, it was the place whereby Abraham and Abimelech made an oath. Actually, the meaning of Bathsheba, it means the, the well of the oath. That is the place whereby they made an oath. Abimelech asked Abraham, be good to me. And Abraham made a promise to him. And I want you to, to bear witness to the fact that at this particular moment, they were exchanging something. There was a transaction that was taking place. And I want you to hold on to that point a little bit because there's somewhere I'm leading you with that. And you consider the woman, Agar. We know the story. She was the bond servant of Abraham. She's just gotten knocked up by the master. That is Abraham. And right now, she is the baby mama. And I know many of you can relate with that. Maybe I'm talking to a young lady right now. You're a baby mama scenario. Somebody got you knocked up. They're not willing to, be the, 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 to bear you as their one and only. They have somebody else. You are the side thing. And maybe all your life you've been feeling like the side thing. Most of the opportunities that came to you, came to you as a chance, as mere luck. And maybe some things that you're feeling right now makes you wonder, when will I be the prime thing? When will I ever be the main thing? That is what Hagar felt when she was being chased away with her son. And she finds herself, guess where? In the desert of Bathsheba again. She finds herself in that particular desert. 
And the Bible says she gets to a place whereby they finished all the water they had and the baby is about to die. And she feels, no, I can't watch this happening. She takes the baby, places the baby a mile off. The Bible says a ball throw away just to see the baby die off because she could not handle it. She's in a place that is so hard. She's in a hard place herself. And consider Elijah again. He's on his way through the desert again, Bathsheba. At this particular point, he's running from Jezebel, having done an incredible miracle. This man was a man of miracles, signs and wonders. God used him in an unbelievable way. And he goes into the desert afraid for his life. Again, fear was a motivation in this story. Just like it is a motivation for so many of us. We are uncertain of what the future is holding. You're not sure whether you'll be able to make it through the next month. Maybe your debt has gotten to a place whereby you feel right now it's getting too much. When will God come through? Will he come through? Why doesn't he come through? And you consider yourself like Elisha because he was afraid to the extent that the Bible says he sat under a broom tree and he said, God, I'm ready to die right now because I can't take it anymore. And maybe you're there and you're also struggling with control. Because every single one of us as human beings, we share one thing in common. We want to be in control. We want to know how things will turn out. We want to know that our plans are coming through the way we laid them out. And it's hard, especially dealing with a God who is so full of surprises. Sometimes the Bible says there is a way that seems right to men, but in the end will lead to destruction. Sometimes your plan seems to be everything you want it to be. But in the end, God has a foresight that you do not have. And it's not easy giving up control to a God you can't see. We have senses that make us limited to the supernatural. Because if I can't see it, I can't understand it. If I can't hear it, I can't respond to it. And we have a God who has a knack of functioning in the area of the unnatural, of the not so common. So Jacob is running out of fear. Hagar has been humiliated. She didn't even know God at that point. She's run away. Elijah, motivated by fear, is running away. Samson, he's tired, he's worn out. Everybody, every single one of them, one thing they had in common is that just like Jacob, they were in a hard place. They were in a hard place. But I'm excited because the Bible has a story twisting to it. We're serving a God who has a way of turning things around you never even thought possible. He says, give me your ashes. I will give you beauty in return. He says, bring everything that is defiled. I will sanctify it. This is the type of God who makes a way in the desert place. They were in Bathsheba in a desert place. And this is the place that was named after an oath. And what happens, the reason why I brought in The meaning of the name Bathsheba, the origin of this name is because what is about to transpire next is going to blow your mind away. The Bible says Abimelech, in the same, same text, I think it's Genesis 21, Abimelech comes to Abraham and tells Abraham, I want you to swear to me that you will never deal falsely with me because I have noticed that everything you do, God is with you. He wanted that favor. He wanted the same favor, the same love that was on Abraham's life to be on his life. And maybe you're there and there is somebody you're looking at afar and you're envying the life they're living. You're saying, God, I want to live like them. I want to be as happy as them. You know, right now we are in a society and in a generation whereby reality shows are running every single station. Whether you want to be a Kardashian, whether you want to be like Bahati and his wife, whether you want to be like uh, DJ, uh, um, you want to be uh, size eight with her husband. Everybody's looking at reality shows and we are seeing people telling us the life that they are living. Beautiful life, nice cars, nice house, drama all around. We have foods that are stacked up. 
They are not feeling the pinch of the economy like some of us are feeling. And we are looking at their lives and we are saying, God, I want that kind of life. So Abimelech is looking at Abraham's life and he's saying, everything you seem to do is working out for you and God is always with you and I want that too. Maybe you're then you're saying, I want God with me too. Things are not okay with my family and I'm tired of always getting the short end of the stick. I'm tired of always losing. And I feel you wherever you are. I know exactly what you're feeling right now. And maybe things are running out for you. You feel as if the clock is running out. I wanted to be married by 27. I'm hitting 28 and I'm not even dating right now. I wanted to have a family by the time I was hitting 30. Every relationship I've had is falling into pieces. I wanted my business to have picked up and do well. And right now you're telling me COVID is ruling every single trending thing out there. They're telling me the reason I can't succeed is because this disease has everything on lockdown. Maybe you wanted to be a minister, aspiring minister, and the people you looked up to, the mentors, people that you trusted, are the same one that drilled you down. They stripped you bare and left you naked. Maybe you wanted family to back up your dreams, and just like Jacob, or rather just like Joseph, instead of backing you up, they sold you out. I know it's hard. I remember a time in my life whereby things were so difficult and I don't know why they were difficult I just know that things were difficult and I got to a place whereby I wanted to commit suicide and actually I I attempted it I used to feel so numb emotionally because I did not understand I'm believing in a God that I can't seem to grasp and I'm believing in a faith that has all the answers but I can't see them manifesting I felt numb because no matter how many times people advised me, people talked to me, no matter how many prayers I made, I still felt like I was not going to move forward. And I remember I came to a point whereby I even started cutting myself because I wanted to feel something. Even if it's pain, let me feel something. Give me something I can relate with because my current life right now is not making enough sense. And I did all that. And maybe you're there too. Maybe while you're listening to this message, you told yourself after this, I'm calling it quits. I'm done with the faith. If this message will not heal my heart, I am done with trusting God. Maybe you are in that place right now. You're saying, if this family does not back me up on this dream, and like the other ones, I'm done. I'm walking out. And maybe you're there and you're saying, God, I'm holding this particular solution. This mix, this concussion, because I want to end my life. I am tired of it all. But I'm here to tell you that God has heard you wherever you are. Because as Jacob is sleeping on that particular hard, pain, hard thing, that rock, the Bible says that he had a dream. And it was not just a dream, it was a vision. The Bible says that he saw a ladder from heaven to earth and upon it he saw angels ascending and descending Hebrews chapter 1 verse 11 if I'm not mistaken the Bible says oh sorry Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 the Bible says angels are ministering spirits that are sent to all those that are about to receive salvation today I might be the angel you've been waiting for because I come to you with this message that God has heard you and it was in that hard place, the Bible says, while he slept, that he saw heavenly and earth transaction. Heaven was moving down to minister to earth, even as earth was crying out to heaven. Hagar was crying out to God. She placed the baby far off, and she could not bear it, and the baby was crying. And the Bible says, an angel of the Lord appeared because they heard the voice of that crying baby. Are you crying right now, wherever you are? It's okay. Let those tears drop. I think sometimes we want to keep it so much together that we deny God the opportunity to minister to our hearts. The Bible says that he is God for the brokenhearted. Why does it say brokenhearted? It does not say almost brokenhearted. It says brokenhearted. It's okay if you're feeling the pain. I felt it too. There are others out there that are feeling it too. 
You're not alone in this. It's okay if right now you're feeling broken. You're feeling worn out. Consider Jesus on the last day right before he is crucified. The Bible says he kneels down and he cries tears of blood because he, the, the, the cup that was handed to him felt heavy. Consider Elijah, the man who did so many miracles, running away because he's afraid. It's okay if you're broken right now. You don't have to put up an act and say that you're still strong. Samson, a strong man, fighting, and all of a sudden he feels as if he's going to die out of thirst. It's okay if you're feeling tired right now. Joseph, receiving a dream that he was going to conquer his own family, he was going to reign. It's okay. If you're feeling tired right now, they felt tired too. Moses sitting down on a rock, lifting up his hands. He got tired until Aaron came to lift up his hands for him. It's okay if you're feeling tired right now. Sometimes what you need more than anything else is to feel that pain and to let it out. So Jacob is there running away. Agar is there. The baby is about to die. Elijah is there telling God, kill me right now. They were at the lowest places of their lives. Maybe you're there too. But the Bible says, as they cried, as the baby cried, as Elijah cried to the Lord, God sent an angel to renew their strength. As Samson cried to the Lord, God split open the earth and water came gushing out for him to drink. You're wondering who will help you. You're wondering who will open the door for you. Cry out to the Lord. He will hear you. And he's hearing you right here and right now. Stretch forth your hand to the one who is your helper. David put it out this way. I cry out unto the Lord. I lift my eyes unto the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. God hears you wherever you are right now. And I don't care whether you are in the midst of people right now and you feel like crying. It's okay. Let it out. If you want to fall on your knees right now and just cry out to God, do it. Because all this facade of putting up great walls of strength when you know inside you're crushing that is pretense you don't need to pretend before God open up your heart to him I hear you where you are I will make a way for you that is what he's telling you and the Bible says and he dreamt and behold a ladder set upon the earth and on top it reached to heaven and behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it and verse 13 and behold Jehovah stood above it and said I am Jehovah the God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac the land wherein thou liest and to thee will I give it and to thy seed at the toughest place of his life God came through with a promise that in this place right now where you're hurting, where you're broken, where you're feeling tired, where you're feeling empty. This place is a place I'm about to bless you. Why do I call it heaven transaction? It's because the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. That praises be to the God, through the Lord of our Father. Rather to the Lord, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in heaven with every spiritual blessing and chose us beforehand. God chose you even before you considered him. All he has been waiting for is for you to lift up your eyes and turn to him. It's to lift up your eyes and turn to him. There are blessings. There are solutions heaven is holding up for you and they will only come to you when you open those channels. They say that a closed hand cannot receive and that is true for a closed heart as well. 
a closed heart cannot receive. So wherever you are right now, maybe you're holding bitterness because the people you thought could have saved you have not saved you. Let it go right now. Maybe right now your heart is feeling pinched, squished. You are between a rock and a harder place and you have nowhere else to go. Baby, I'm telling you, look up. God will answer that prayer. So wherever you are right now, I want you to do this for me. I want you to take a second. Hold whatever you're doing. If you are cooking, stop. If you are driving, stop. If you are writing, stop. Wherever you are doing right now, just hold still wherever you are. And I want you to focus on my voice as I invite you to do this. Close your eyes. Open up your mind, your heart. And let your mouth tell God, I need you now. I can't do this anymore without you. I've been running for so long. Running from the consequences of my decisions. Running from my mistakes. I look to you right now. Help me understand. Give me the answers I need. My family can do it. My friends can do it. My lover can do it. My spouse can do it. Nobody has been able to give me these answers. I've been running for so long. Get me there. And while your eyes are shut, I want you just to open up your heart right now and tell God, I'm here. As simple as that. I'm here. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, the Bible says, those that come to God must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of those that seek diligently for him. Maybe you're there and you're saying, I've not been seeking diligently. But the thing is, do you believe? Do you believe that he can make the way for you? I know how it feels when you feel like your faith is not enough. I'm reminded of that young man. Jesus asked, do you want me to heal you? And he said, help my unbelief. It's okay. It's okay. So open up yourself right now. And just like me, I want you to tell God, God, it's been difficult the past couple of days and I feel as if I've gotten to the end of my rope. I want you to hold my hand and walk with me because I don't have strength left inside. I feel like I've been running for too long and my feet are weary. My faith is worn out and I feel as if I can't make it right now. So God, just take a hold of me and carry me forward. I open up my heart to you, Lord, just to tell you that I believe. I believe, God. That's all you ask of me. You say those that come to you must first believe that you are God. I believe that you are the answer, that you have the solutions for me. I believe, God. So hold me up right now. Hold me up right now. Hold me up right now. And wherever you are, I know right now, you can feel his hand touching you because that is the type of God that he is. He responds. He responds. Feel his hand just touching you, the grace of God surrounding you right now, his shalom, the peace of his spirit just filling you in right now. I let go so that you can be God in my heart and in my life right now. And maybe you're there and you've not given your life to Jesus and maybe you're feeling this thing is a faith thing. It only works for those that believe. I want you just to say, God, I'm not born again. I don't have an altar right now, no pastor right now to lay their hands on me. But God, right here, right now, I'm letting you know I want to receive you in my life. So Jesus, come into me. Walk with me. Write my name in the book of life and let me know and build a relationship with you. 
no other place do I want to dwell in apart from the place of your presence. I give my life to Jesus today that he might be the Lord and Savior of my life. Wash me of my sins and cleanse me of every iniquity. Set my heart right with you, God, because in you am I finding rest right now. Thank you, Jesus. I believe, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe. Simple as that. I believe, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe. Come on, just sing it with me. I believe, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe. I believe, oh, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, I believe, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe. For the sake of everyone that has just lifted up their voice to say, Lord, I've been tired, carry me up. I say thank you because you are doing that right now. Carrying them on your wings to the glory and honor of your name. May the Lord bless you wherever you are. This is the beginning of a life you never thought you could experience. Receive your joy, your peace, and settle in the Lord. May the Lord bless you wherever you are. Be kept in Jesus' name. Amen.